Hi everyone, my name is Omar and I am a third year medical student at the University of Nottingham and today I'm going to be giving you nine incredible tips that will help you smash your MMI interview. These tips will cover three categories, revising for your MMI, preparing on the day and your interview strategy. And don't forget to check the timestamps in the description to navigate your way through this video. As always, don't forget to like this video, subscribe if you enjoyed it, and to comment down below any other tips you may have or your experiences with different medical schools. And let's get on with the video. I applied to four medical schools. I applied to University of Bristol, University of Birmingham, University of Nottingham, and University of Exeter. And I received interviews for two of those universities, University of Exeter and University of Nottingham. And after the interview, I got offers for both. So I guess that does mean I did quite well in both sets of interviews and they were both quite different. So hopefully the tips that I used to prepare and ace the interview, you guys will also find very helpful. Now the first thing I did when it came to revising for my MMI interviews was to research the internet thoroughly, trawl through the internet to find question banks. I looked at many different websites which give sample questions for a variety of different stations, whether they're stations about yourself, so where they ask you why medicine, or what's the time you volunteered before, or something like that, or ethical stations, or hot topic stations. You can use those sample questions to practice in your own time, and that you're more or less prepared, or as prepared as you can be, to answer the variety of questions they can ask you come interview day. My second tip is to revise using timed stations. Now the time pressure is one of the most dreadful things about MMI interviews because you have so much that you want to say but you only have literally sometimes only three minutes to answer five plus questions. So by having this time pressure when you revise, you're more or less aware of how quickly these minutes can go past and how to think efficiently and how to answer concisely, keeping your answers short but jam-packed with information and good content. Another pro tip is to actually research how long the stations at your chosen medical schools tend to be. When I applied, which was in 2019, Exeter tended to have um, three minutes to read the prompt and three minutes to answer the questions and Nottingham had one minute to read the prompt and seven minutes to answer the questions but obviously take this with a pinch of salt do your own research I'm not sure if things have changed but this is useful because when you're revising you can always revise using those timings my third tip is to practice with random people. It doesn't matter if they are not a doctor. I revise with my friends, my grandparents, random teachers, and this is so useful because actually a lot of the people who are in your stations will not be doctors themselves. Some of the people marking you will be just general members of the public. So you need to be able to prepare to adapt your communication skills for people of a variety of ages, cultures, um, medical backgrounds, um, and preparing with various types of people in various different scenarios can help you learn to think on your feet. And a bonus tip, why not even give them like a little mark scheme? I'll actually leave a link in the description if I can find a sample mark scheme for MMI stations, although bear in mind they will change from station to station. But you can always give this to the person interviewing you so that they know what to look out for and they know how to give you feedback that's actually gonna help you. A lot of people fall into the trap of saying, I had to use empathy when I worked at a care home um, and I had to help the elderly residents. That, to me, doesn't actually make me believe that you know what empathy is, nor does it leave a lasting impression of any sort. It's kind of like going to the Olympics and saying, I'm really fast, um, can I join the Olympic team for my country? They, they're gonna need to see a time. So the same goes for when you're answering questions like this, whether it's on paper or out loud. Instead, paint them a short but concise picture of how you had to use empathy. So instead, this is how I'd use the framework. S would stand for situation. So what situation was I in? I worked as a volunteer at an elderly care home. T 
tea what was my task i helped coordinate arts and crafts activities with some of the patients a what was my action because one of the patients had a tremor that prevented him from being able to draw or write i noticed the patient would get quite agitated and self-conscious so what i decided to do was reassure him and try and find activities that weren't so much affected by his tremor for example gluing things or sprinkling glitter are for the result i'd say over time his confidence grew and he actually started enjoying and seeking out arts and crafts activities and before he shied away from it because he was simply too self-conscious to get involved. So by using Start, I've given you an engaging account of how I'm empathetic, which is 10 times more believable. Now let's move on to tips I have for the day of the interview. My fifth tip is to plan everything in advance your route, your outfit, and your bag. You want to try and minimize the risk of any unexpected things happening on the day because if something does go wrong, then all it's gonna do is make you feel more stressed out, more anxious, and that's gonna take away from your performance at, in the interview. Try and make a checklist of all the things you need to keep in mind for getting there, what you're going to wear, what you need to bring, any documents or ID, so that you can get there and everything goes smoothly. My sixth tip is to psych yourself up and actually I use this tip every time I have an exam telling yourself you're going to go in and do well, you're going to go in and impress the examiner, you deserve to be at medical school, even if you don't truly believe it, will psychologically improve your mood and improve your confidence. My seventh tip is kind of linked to the last tip and it's to pretend to be cool, calm and collected on the day, even if you're not. So when you get to the interview room, you will be placed with a lot of other candidates yourself. Now, it is very easy to kind of shy away into the corner start overthinking things, start thinking of all the ways that you're not prepared or to start comparing yourself to the people around you. Instead, why not strike up a conversation to the person next to you? Ask them where they go to school or ask them what A-levels they're doing because this can briefly just take your mind off what's happening. No amount of overthinking on the day is going to help you do better. In fact, it might actually hinder you from doing well in your interview. Now I'm going to move on to a set of tips which are related to your interview strategy. My eighth tip is to use psychology to leave a great impression on the examiner. So let's do a thinking exercise. Think about what qualities and traits what non-verbal and verbal communication skills the exemplar candidate would have. They'd walk in with a smile, give a handshake to the examiner, introduce themselves, seem at ease, seem like they're enjoying the process, because you will slowly notice even the examiner's composure change around you and even they'll begin to feel at ease with you. My ninth tip is to not worry if some stations seem unreasonably difficult. They will throw curveballs at you and they don't expect students to get the right answer, but what they are looking for is how a student adapts or perseveres in that station. Remember, there is a margin for error in those stations. In order to get an offer, you don't need to do a, get 100% in your interview. Let me give you some examples from uh, my interview. Obviously, we all revise questions about the NHS and at the same time, they're not going to ask you, okay, when was the NHS invented? Because interviews aren't that straightforward. But I thought I'd done enough revision. And I went into my Exeter interview. It was like one of the last stations. And the examiner said, talk about a time the NHS has failed its patients. The last thing I expected was them to ask me how the NHS is bad. But luckily, I remembered of, about these articles that I'd read, literally just skimming through them, where it talked about how patients um, have experienced huge difficulties in accessing mental health beds. Uh, one patient had to travel 500 miles to get a bed in a psychiatric ward, or how some patients have to wait years to get a talking therapy. Another curveball I got was in my Nottingham interview in the role play. The role play was that I was on voluntary placement and one of my friends stopped turning up and it was kind of affecting my well-being because I was having to do the work that they weren't doing and had to find out what was going on. And it was a seven minute station and I'm not kidding you. Six minutes in, the actor kept saying, I'm not talking to you. I don't want to tell you um, what I'm going through. It's none of your business. And I was literally like, is there something I'm not doing? Like, what am I meant to do if he's just not gonna tell me what he's going through? How am I meant to show empathy? And then literally like the last 30 seconds of the station, he said, okay, the truth is I'm going through, can't remember what it was. And I was like, oh my God, thank God. So what this goes to show is that some stations will be difficult and they'll throw things at you that you don't expect, but you can still 
get an offer. Sometimes they're doing this on purpose. Maybe the examiner will be difficult on purpose. Maybe they'll have a difficult actor. Maybe they'll throw in a question which is like something they know you haven't prepared for. You can't prepare for this, but just know that if this does happen, it's not necessarily your fault and it's not necessarily that you're doing badly in it. It's just because that's what they've decided to include in the interview. So now that we've reached the end of the video, I hope you found it helpful and I hope you have learned a few tips that will help you go into that interview feeling more prepared and more confident because that is exactly what examiners want to see. Please leave a massive like, please subscribe and check out the video I mentioned before if you want a more detailed account on exactly how you should be revising leading up to your MMI interview and I'll see you in the next one.